Well, we're in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia uh, in mid-October of 2011 with Professor Andreas, Assistant Professor of Obstetrics and Gynecology at the Medical School in Addis Ababa, Hospital Director and Chief Obstetrician Gynecologist at the Sapara Hospital, <clears throat> a 50-bed hospital uh, operated by Casito Healthcare. And Dr. Andreas, you were just describing a really interesting, complicated case that came in a month or so ago. And if you could just tell me and tell the students who are watching this, what happened? Where did the patient come from? And what did you do and what transpired as we were talking about a few minutes ago? Yeah. This uh, is uh, a client who came from uh, the city, referred from another hospital. And then, uh, you know, this patient had a history of uh, premature rupture of membrane uh, for about 48 hours. And then uh, she also was considered as a septic patient. And then we evaluated this patient. This patient was with the term pregnancy, uh, 39, 39 plus 5 weeks by date. And then <coughs> we admitted this patient as a uh, premature rupture of the membrane, which is very, very prolonged. And then we started uh, management on this particular case. We opened IV line and we give her, uh, we gave her uh, antibiotics. And then after then we started induction. She was admitted as an emergency? Yeah, she has to be considered an emergency because of uh, prolonged premature rupture of the membrane. Mm -hmm. And then uh, immediately as she arrived, we started that. And then, uh, successfully, the cervix opening in good manner means that, uh, you know, she practically become uh, fully cervical dilation within uh, six hours time. And then, after then, she gave birth normally. You induced her? Yeah, after induction. Mm -hmm. And then with uh, Antibiotics coverage. Medically, we, we 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 manage that well, and then uh, after giving birth, giving birth, she started to bleed. We inspected all part of the vulvar region. We inspected the vagina. We inspected the cervix. There was no any laceration, which was normal, but the blood is coming from uterine cavity and then the uterus was very vogue, relaxed, not contracted and we considered that case as a uterine anatomy and then we started using uterotonic uh, reagents such as oxytocin, narcometrin. Accordingly, we directly injected intramuscularly. At the same time, we established infusion and then when with uh, uh, with the external massage of the uterus, and then sometimes it become little bit contracted, but it releases, and then it started to bleed, and then <clears throat> we established condition, we get blood, and we decided to do a strectomy this individual, and then. We operated the patient. We gave birth. We we, uh, we give uh, blood, and then what happened? After then, this patient started to bleed anywhere of her part. And there was an issue of blood. You had there was one unit of blood, and it was type B negative. B negative, yeah. The problem is, you know, uh, B negative blood in in the city is is, uh, is a bit difficult to get. And then um, we sent our worker, lab worker, to 
blood uh, uh, to, to Red Cross. Red Cross, yeah. And then in Red Cross there was no any B negative blood. Mm -hmm. And therefore that reason we sad, but you know, meanwhile she started to bleed from any part of her, her body. Mm -hmm. And then we considered this individual at the DIC. Mm -hmm. And then we DIC meaning? Meaning that uh, uh, disseminated intravascular coagulation disorder. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we couldn't do nothing because, you know, for lack of blood, mm -hmm. at the same time, she is highly septic. Mm -hmm. this, uh, with this condition, you know, finally, after doing much, much effort to save her, that we couldn't Could save mm -hmm. that. And uh, so that she, um, when her uterus was flaccid and atonic and wouldn't respond, that's when you moved to the hysterectomy in the blood. Yeah. And then after the hysterectomy, she got the disseminated intravascular coagulation. True. Yeah. A really, uh, a really tough case. What, what might have been done differently? What might have prevented her from dying? Well, in this particular case, uh, it's difficult to say that uh, you can say this individual. Because of, you know, when when individual enters into DIC... Oh, you know, yes, but earlier. I mean... Er earlier. Yeah. Yeah, earlier, you know, uh, this patient was making round in the city, you know, after uh, premature rupture of the membrane. Mm -hmm. If this individual was, was uh, you know, started accordingly or she gave birth on time mm -hmm. she could have been not infected you yeah. know infection is in C uh, contributes some uh, into her death mm -hmm. so you know the best way to save this this individual is just to get her timely and then induction and then to do uh, better management and then one would have had a healthy mother and a healthy baby. In this case, we have a healthy mother and unfortunately, a healthy baby and healthy unfortunately baby, yeah. a, de mother, a dead mother. mother. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that's a fascinating, tragic story, a lot to learn, and it's certainly the case. She got the best care she could possibly get in Addis by coming here, yeah. and in fact, had shopped around for some other places and couldn't get admitted. So thank you so much. That's very, very kind of you and a really illuminating, helpful story. Thank you.